again folks and uh, welcome to 2015 and this will be my first uh, video for the year. I have gone out and purchased myself one of these new Mega Blasters, the Mega Cyclone Shock and was wondering what can we do with this? So we will uh, go about pulling it apart, have a look at the internals, what can we see what can be done with it. But before that we will do what we normally do and that's pop it across the chronograph and see what sort of FPS it gives us in stock form and see what we can do to try and improve that. Alright, so we'll set the chronograph up. Six shots with the stock dart. Let's uh, see what we, she puts out. So there's our six shots from the blaster in its stock form. We'll work out the average and we'll put that on screen just below the blaster here. Now what we'll do from here is we'll have a look at uh, how we go about pulling this apart, see what it comprises of and see what sort of mods we can do to try and improve the performance. Uh, then we'll pop it back over the chronometer and see what sort of improvements we've been able to make. Alright, bear with me one moment, I'll uh, grab a screwdriver and we'll start taking this thing apart and have a look at the internals. Back in one second. Okay, so if we pull that top slide cover off, there's always one small, smaller screw at the top there that you need to be aware of. And then it would appear that underneath that slide we have two additional screws. Um, okay. And that would appear to be your plungeable back point from there, so... Um, Alright, so we'll undo these two screws and, uh, and get this shell apart. Okay, so we've got the shell apart. Um, your return spring is in the top there at the back for your cocking plate, what have you. Uh, there's the back of your plunger tube and your spring, which looks very lightweight. Looks like a decent sized plunger tube though. So hopefully we can actually uh, make some modifications to that and improve the FPS out of this. Um, your main cylinder looks very similar to a like a large strong arm, so um, we'll treat it fairly much as such and see what we can do. Um, how hard is this to get out? Oh, okay. Well, okay. Look, it all comes out as one unit. Um, that's cool. Now let's. Uh, this plunger tube out and have a look at it. Okay, your trigger assembly all comes out as one complete unit, um, which is pretty straightforward. Alright, there's your plunger assembly. Um, as you can see, there's uh, those two big notches either side, they need to be filled. The centre cap where the uh, screw is, we'll put a sticky pad in over the top of that. This uh, O-ring, I mean, look at this thing, it's just so loose, like, we'll um, get some tape under that and strengthen that up. Um, and we'll have a look and see if we can't find a spring that's going to put this thing to shame, because that's pretty, pretty weak. Um, okay. What else? Um, Alright. We might nip the posts out of the back of these cylinders. Um, to open them up, and we might have a look and see that uh, about um, either removing or propping the um, the air restrictor mechanism open, so that it gives you a full uh, full whack of air. All right, we'll uh, do a little bit more disassembly and see what has to be done, and uh, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so what I have done is I have removed the cross section from in the back there, which has allowed me to remove the spring and air restrictor. Um, I've removed the uh, plunger head from the plunger rod and what I've actually done is I've found a Orange Modworks uh, retaliator spring. I can't remember what the actual kilogram is. Now normally it would be slightly too small to fit over this shaft. Now there are some raised ribs just either side of the channel on this 
which don't seem to serve any real purpose, like I can't see that they're um, imperative. So what I found is if you do sand them back, you can actually fit this spring onto that shaft. Um, now it's a little bit longer than the stock spring and significantly uh, higher poundage than the stock spring. So it should give it a, a you know, reasonable amount more oomph. So um, what I'm just doing now is just uh, heating up the hot glue gun to fill the little side sections on here. I've put some uh, tape under the o-ring to give it a much better o-ring seal um, so the o-ring doesn't flop around like it used to. Um, a little sticky pad to go in the top there to fill in the dead space after the screw goes back in. And then I think we'll be ready to go about reassembling um, I think. Um, yeah, so they're the mods that I'm making. Um, oh, I've got to, I'm going to clip out the posts at the back of, back of these too. That's the only other thing. Um, Alright, I'll go about doing that. And uh, come back and I'll show you the plunger tube, the plunger uh, assembly once it's been reassembled with the hot glue inserts and the sticky pad. Back shortly. Okay, so I've fin finished with my plunger mods. Um, as you can see, I've used a piece of the foam padding in there to fill the dead space in the centre where the, the screw goes. Uh, I've filled in the two slots either side with hot glue and smoothed it out, as you can see there. Um, I've just got to remove the dags off the top there, but just smoothed it out so that it keeps the profile of the plunger head. Um, put tape under the under the O-ring so that it spaces that out a little bit more. Um, so it's uh, I've put, put the heavier spring on. Um, so it's uh, ready to reassemble, the plunger assembly. I've just got to re uh, put a little bit of lubricant in the plunger tube and we'll be right to uh, reassemble. So I'll, I'll just do that quickly and um, put that back in place. Right, so what I'm going to do is do a complete reassembly so you can see exactly where every component goes. Just in case some of you lose a part um, in the process. Now... Um, obviously you've got your plunger tube inside here, the plunger tube, now this, your front barrel just pulls off. Now I have <coughs> taken out the posts and just given that back edge a bit of a resurface with a, a bit of a sand just to get it all nice and smooth and flushed off so that you get a better seal with the, uh, with the foam pad on the front of the plunger assembly. Now that basically just pushes into place, it pushes in, okay that's essentially all that there is to holding that in place. Now to put this back in the blaster, you have a little tab at the top there which you want to get underneath your uh, orange tack rail, whatever you want to call it at the top there. Uh, then you slide this back and the whole assembly will just drop into place. Um, oh, what I should have done was put the plunger tube back in. Now, with fitting this, uh, this spring, because it is a very tight fit, what I have found is that what you need to do is, if you look at the back edge of this section where the spring slides up over it, you can see I've actually rounded that off, like with a file, I've put a taper on it, so that the spring slides up over it, because as it goes to slide back through the spring, it can get jammed up, so... By putting a bit of a chamfer on that edge, hopefully that will alleviate that. Um, and everything else is in place and ready to go back together. So I'll pop this plunger assembly back into the plunger tube. Okay, so that's uh, back into place there now, and the spring's located at the back. Now, there's also this little piece here, a uh, little rocker arm. Now, that actually goes in up on behind the tree catch here. That okay. Um, now the other piece that often pops out is this little piece here, which needs to locate up here, and the little blade part of that actually locates into this part of your trigger mechanism. So when you pop your trigger back in, it'll locate in there. Place and that should all drop in place as well. Alright, like so. 
All right, so we're all back in position, all back together. Um, right now, I'll go about putting the two halves of the blaster together, and we should be right to have a test fire, etc. All right, I'll just uh, put the top of the shell on, and we'll see how we go. Mega Cyclone Shock is all back together now. Um, it seems to be working okay. But now let's um, put it across the chronograph and see what sort of a difference we've been able to make, if any. So without any further ado, we'll... Okay, so, uh, so they're some pretty good figures, especially considering they are mega darts. You're getting uh, around 85, 86 feet per second uh, from mega darts is pretty flaming good. Um, what we might do is just, uh, we might just run outside and do a quick uh, range test. Okay, so here in the front yard uh, to the fence there is um, 60 feet. See if I can set this camera up and uh, so that we can just film and I can just shoot. There you go, like that. Um, let's place them out. We've got one, two. Four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fourteen yards, fifteen, fifteen and a bit, fifteen yards, and we got it's parallel with across. It's sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen yards, twenty yards. This one here, four, now, and I'm pretty sure that one actually went over the fence. So let's um, just have a quick squeeze over. Oh, there it is. Right there. So I'll go and grab that in a minute. Right, so that's my spin on the mega. Cyclone shock um, with the uh, additional mods, the secondary spring, the plunger head mods, etc. It seems to be uh, getting some decent FPS. Uh, I'll put the average at the bottom of the screen now, now that it's been modified, and that leaves us with an overall difference of uh, the figure just above the blaster here. Um, so that's our improvement. So as you can see, it's a significant improvement, and um, it makes this blaster a really nice little pistol. Um, well, it's not little, it's a really nice big pistol. Considering it fires the Mega Darts, uh, to get those sort of FPS readings out of the Mega Darts is pretty damn good, especially from a pistol. Um, I am thinking about doing some additional cosmetic mods to this one, so, so stay tuned, and um, you may see a secondary video on this one. Uh, in the meantime, thanks very much for watching and uh, please subscribe, like my videos and I will see you on the next mod. Thanks again. Cheers.